casting TC808 polyurethane resin into an alginate mold. In this tutorial, I'm going to be covering the process of pouring a polyurethane resin into an alginate mold. And of course, this process is tricky because alginate is a water-based impression material and polyurethane resin does not like moisture. So in this tutorial, I'm going to be covering the use of TC808 for this application. And in previous tutorials, I've shown the process of casting platinum silicone for flexible, realistic positives. But this time around, we're going to be casting a tough, impact resistant resin that will actually get fingerprint detail out of our alginate mold. Now this is a process that came up recently when I was out in California visiting the good people at BJB. And just a side note here, I still have a lot of content that I'll be editing and posting from that trip, so stay tuned for that. But during that visit, I talked to Troy about the moisture resistance of TC-808 and how I'd use that particular resin against water-based clay with good results. And I asked him if he thought that might work uh, cast into an alginate mold. And he answered in the affirmative. So when I got back, I decided before I forgot about this, I'd make a quick mold of my hand and try it out and see what kind of results I get. So here you go. Now this of course is just a typical mold tube glued to a foam core base so I can make a copy of my hand. And typically I always like to make these tubes and these mold containers at uh, the right height there so I can just dangle my hand into the bucket there and have that at the right height throughout the mold. And now I'm ready to release my hand with some petroleum jelly or some Vaseline. Always a good idea to make sure you're using an oil-based release like petroleum jelly or Vaseline for this process. If you use Vaseline, just make sure you're using uh, Vaseline that doesn't contain any kind of fragrances. And this, of course, is my blown up hand. You notice my uh, fingers are kind of jacked up there. This is a, a good object lesson for you kids. Don't play with fire. Play with explosives and you'll wind up with jacked up hands like mine. So again, kids... Just a reminder not to play with fire. Now, mixing and measuring of alginate is something I've covered in a lot of other tutorials. So for time's sake, I'm not gonna cover it here, but an important detail about mixing is this zip mixer that uh, Troy sent me one of these. And these zip mixers are fantastic for mixing silicones and polyurethane resins and foams, and of course, alginates as I'm doing right here. This works really well for getting into those corners around the bottom of the bucket and uh, got great results on this. So Troy, if you're watching this now, just know that that zip mixer works great for alginates and gypsums as well as polyurethanes and silicones. So again, this made short work of the mixing process. So got a really nice creamy mix on my alginate and then I'm ready to pour that into the tube. And again, this is just an overview of this process. So definitely check out my other tutorials if you want to see a more detailed explanation of the life casting uh, process. But uh, you see that got a really nice creamy consistency. And now I'm ready to plunge my hand into that mix and mold my hand. I just mixed up just enough. This was about a pound of facet alginate. So just enough to do my hand right to the base of the wrist. And typically I like to dip my hand in the alginate, pull it out, rub that alginate into the detail of my hand and then plunge it back down. And of course, this being a fast setting formula, this was ready to demold in just a couple of minutes. And you see that uh, leftover material on my left hand. I use that as a timer to check when that's done. Then I know I'm ready to remove the mold from my right hand. Now, one thing, when you're mixing up your alginate, it's a really good idea if you know you're going to be pouring something in like a polyurethane that could have potential for moisture contamination. It's a good idea to make sure uh, once you remove any of the little drips or anything that could fall down into the mold, I like to flip that mold upside down. And what that does is that allows any leftover moisture inside the mold to drip out of the fingertips because fingertips sometimes can accumulate moisture. Now, because I am very frugal and anytime I make an impression of my hand, I like to get as much action out of that mold as possible. So I had some TC5110F. This is a platinum silicone that cures up much like human skin. So I had some of that sitting around and the nice thing about uh, platinum silicone like this, especially these really soft formulas, is that we can cast these directly into alginate and it won't destroy the mold. So if we're careful, we can pull that out and then still have the mold to use 
uh, possibly several more times if we're using a soft casting material like silicone. So again, this is 5110F platinum silicone. This is a fast setting platinum silicone that sets up and feels much like human skin. So it has about a uh, six to eight minute working time at room temperature, and then about a one hour demold. And that's important because the lifespan of an alginate mold like this, especially in the summertime, is pretty short. Typically, you get accurate results out of an alginate mold within the first uh, maybe two or three hours of making that mold. And the hotter and drier it is, the faster that mold will degrade and start to dry out. So real important, you wanna make sure anytime you're using a fast set alginate mold like this, or even a slow set alginate mold for that matter, but anytime you're making an impression with alginate, you want to make sure you're ready to use that mold as soon as possible to get the most accurate results. So here what I'm doing is just the usual burping of any air bubbles down the fingertips. And then I'm going to leave that alone to set up. Now, what I didn't show here is I did vacuum degas that TC5110F. That is a very low viscosity formula, but I still like to vacuum degas it just so I get nice bubble free results. And that just makes sure I don't get any of those little micro bubbles on the surface of my part. So this is about an hour later. And of course, this being Texas, it really doesn't even take a full hour for this to set up here in the nice Texas heat. And again, if I'm careful, I can remove this without uh, deforming the alginate mold, and then I'm ready to cast another copy. And again, this is one of the nice things if you're making uh, silicone parts from an alginate mold, a lot of times you can get uh, several casts. I've gotten as many as um, you know six to eight casts out of an alginate mold uh, with really good results out of the same mold if you're careful. So again, kind of a uh, an aside to the main point of this video, which is of course resin casting, but always good to see what you can do with a mold like this. Again, I always like to get as much as I can out of a temporary mold, so I get my money's worth. Now there's another little a chunk of alginate that fell into the mold during that casting process. Now what I'm doing here is putting a little bit of petroleum jelly around the edge of the uh, a mold tube there so the resin wouldn't stick but I learned the hard way dear viewers that uh, that was not enough of a release agent so if I was to do this over again I would use high temp paste wax for that instead of petroleum jelly. Now TC808, the part B, we want to shake that up really well before we mix it with part A. And remember that TC808 is a two minute working time resin at room temperature. So always a good idea to pre-mix any pigments or additives that you're going to be using into the part B before you add your part A. And even though this is a fast setting resin, the reason that it works well in alginate is it is a very moisture resistant resin. In fact, in a previous tutorial I did on uh, resin problems, to contaminate it, I actually had to intentionally contaminate it by pouring some water into the resin to contaminate it. So this is a very moisture resistant formula that works really well for applications like this. So again, once our pigment is added to that B, we're ready to add the part A. And at that point, the clock starts ticking. So just remember, as soon as you add your part A, you wanna get everything thoroughly mixed, scraping the sides and the bottom of the mixing bucket. Make sure you take time to do that properly. Even though this is fast, we wanna get everything mixed up as accurately as possible, and then have that ready to pour into our alginate mold. And again, that's where I like to have that mold flipped upside down. So any latent moisture inside that mold Mold has a chance to drip out and sometimes I even warm up the inside of the mold a little bit that with a hair dryer especially in winter time and that's just one more added protection to make sure that uh, my polyurethane resin isn't contaminated by any moisture coming out of the alginate mold. Now I've previously cast up some positives in alginate molds using TC1630, which is a filled resin system, but that of course cures kind of a charcoal gray. So TC808 will be good for some of you that wanna pour up casts that have specific pigmented colors to them uh, where you wanna pour those directly into an alginate mold. And now of course you see here where I would have been much better off using high temp paste wax 
uh, and a brush, of course, instead of my finger, instead of the Vaseline. Because, of course, the Vaseline, when that resin exothermed or put off that, went through that heat cycle, it just pushed that uh, petroleum jelly right out of the way and grabbed onto that tube underneath. So, lesson learned. So, learn from me, viewers. And just remember, if you're doing this process with one of these tubes like this, make sure you release the inside of that tube, at least when you're casting resin like this, that you release the inside of that tube with uh, high temp paste wax. And now, of course, ready to uh, tear off that alginate mold. And of course, unlike the silicone mold, when we're removing a hard positive like this, of course, we just have to tear that off. So I present this to you for those of you that are casting into alginate molds and you want a harder, tougher positive than say um, something like HydraCal or UltraCal. There are some applications where you might want to cast a flesh pigmented resin directly into an alginate mold to have a fast end product. Or you might need to pour up a resin core for a mold or resin pattern that's stronger than say a, a HydraCal or UltraCal pattern. But I mainly wanted to show some of you that have been uh, casting patterns and uh, positives out of alginate molds using TC1630 that uh, this is a great option for uh, those times when you don't need a filled resin. You just need a hard impact resistant resin that you can cast directly into an alginate mold because 1630 is great, but because of its color and because of its filler, sometimes that can be more difficult to use. So here you see it got incredible detail and even fingerprint detail on the fingertips. So great detail there. Now, one last little technical bit that I discovered in the process of doing this cast is since alginate does get little micro bubbles in it during the mold making process, you see on the inside of my palm, I have some of that pitting and it's not for moisture contamination. I figured out what is causing that. That's actually the heat in the resin at that exotherm stage that then causes those bubbles in the alginate mold to expand and then push inwards into the casting. So I didn't have that on the fingertips, but mainly just the palm of the hand. So something to be aware of that uh, areas where you're going to have accumulation of tiny little bubbles under the surface of the alginate, you want to be aware of that, that that can create some little pock marks on the surface of your part if you're not careful. So there you have the process of casting TC-808 directly into an alginate mold. And TC-808 is just one more of those resin systems that's really good for this kind of application. Really good resin to know about, especially if you're going to be using resins up against water-based clay or uh, wet impression materials like alginate molds. So real important to know about that. And of course, I will link the TC-808 in the video description as well as the other products I used for this process. And especially this zip mixer. Uh, thanks, big thanks to Troy for sending me the zip mixer. Had great results with that and uh, worked really well for mixing alginate for this process. Now, as always, if you haven't already, be sure to like and subscribe. And of course, pay attention to the end screen here. I will have some extra video links for you dealing with additional materials shot on location at BJB Enterprises in, of course, sunny Tustin, California.